If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us join together in the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us join together in this portion of Psalm 110, reading responsively by whole verse. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter, rule in the midst of your foes. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning, like dew, your youth will come to you. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on this day of his wrath. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed, they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Again, I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. And Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let's join together in the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, From the fig tree learn its lesson, as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour that he does not know. He will cut him in pieces and put him out with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in praying the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to, to go, go in peace, in peace as, as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I'd like to offer just a little commentary about the lessons appointed this evening. Uh, these lessons are the appointed lessons for the feast day of St. Benedict of Nursia. Now today is not the feast day for Benedict, Saturday is, but looking ahead and anticipating that important day in the life of the Western Church uh, and seeing also the tremendous relevance of uh, Benedict and these lessons to uh, our contemporary life at this time. 
So Benedict was born about 20 years before the year 500. Uh, we don't know exactly. What we do know is this. He was born at the time of great political instability, when the Roman Empire was falling into pieces. And we know that St. Benedict was just repulsed by what he was seeing in his own community in Rome. We know that St. Benedict, in response to everything that was falling apart, retreated from Rome and began to set the example of what the monastic life is about. Uh, I believe he was actually uh, joined there by uh, another uh, person practicing a sort of monastic practice. And, and Benedict became famous for this uh, book called The Rule of Benedict. And it really is just a rule of life. One way to organize your time and priorities in life. And for Benedict, that included prayer. It included spiritual reading. It included work. Uh, it into, included sufficient time also for meals and rest. Uh, it's considered to be a firm but flexible rule of life. I, I commend uh, further reading uh, about the rule of Benedict because one of his priorities was stability. In a time of great instability, Benedict emphasized stability of life. He also emphasized amendment of life. An amendment of life requires a constant self-examination. That is part of the gift of the Holy Scriptures. It's not just that we read the Bible, but the Bible reads us when we pay attention to it. It provides a means by which we can examine our lives and make the necessary amendments. The third central aspect of the rule of Benedict was the priority of obedience. Obedience is not a popular concept. <laughs> it is not in style. In, at least in 21st century America. But obedience, it is important to note, is derived from the Latin term and it begins with the idea of listening. The question for me, for all of us, is who are we listening to? Are we listening to Christ? Are we listening to the law and the prophets? Are we listening to the lessons of Holy Scripture to help shape and form our lives? to help shape and form the rule of our lives as we seek to live peaceably in relationship with God and in relationship with our neighbors. You can see, therefore, why St. Paul's letter to the Romans, this passage from St. Paul's letter, was selected for the Feast of St. Benedict because it's all about hearing. Faith comes by hearing, says Paul. And he points the Roman congregation back to the teachings of Christ to say that is what is foundational. That is how we organize and shape our lives, the way we relate to God and to neighbor, just like that great commandment that both Moses and Jesus point us to. The second reading that we heard tonight from the Gospel according to St. Matthew would not be a popular reading in most, <laughs> on most days. Uh, it's another one of the harsh teachings that Jesus offers. And so it'd be much easier to kind of dodge that one and not listen to those challenging words. But Jesus just tells us what is true, that we can look and pay attention and see the seasons as they are to change. The, it gives the, the figurative example of the fig tree, but to take stock of, of what's happening all around us and to respond faithfully and accordingly. His point is, we, we don't know when bad things will happen. And so today, the present, is always the time to begin again, to make amendment of life, to renew our commitment, to renew our baptismal vows. Every day is the perfect day to make that new beginning in the light of uncertainty. Jesus says, if the, if, if you had known, the master of the house had known when the thief was coming, there wouldn't have been trouble. If, if the slave had been faithful and knew when the master was coming, there wouldn't have been trouble. And so also it is with us. But I wanna say it's not about fear. The passage is not about fearing the arrival of the Son of Man. 
It is about faithfully preparing for the arrival of the Son of Man so that we can experience the fullness of glory and grace and mercy in the relationship that we actually have with the Son of Man. So it sounds like harsh news. It's actually good news. And today, I, my prayer for you is that in the midst of all the instability, uh, uh, both from the coronavirus, from the um, unrest that we have in our streets, that we need to return to listening to Christ. What are the things that he said? Those are the things we can trust. Those are the things we can count on through thick and thin. Amen. Let's join together in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your saving way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home and that through obedience to thy law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in your word, you have given us a vision of that holy city to which the nations of the world bring their glory. Behold and visit, we pray, the cities of our nation. Renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life. Send us honest and able leaders. Enable us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression, that peace may prevail with righteousness and justice with order, and that men and women from different cultures and with differing talents may find with one another for the fulfillment of their humanity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
For the oppressed, we pray. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these, our neighbors. Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time, either silently or aloud. We give thanks for those in our community who serve on medical teams. For Anne, Christy, Lisa, Pete, Shannon, Allison, David, Ron, Lucy, Victoria, Deidre, Kathy, Milena, and Megan. We pray for those who have asked our prayers of healing, including Susie, Grace, Isabella, Rosemary, Fred, Kirsten, John, Catherine, Sarah, Ruthie, Marty, Rick, Leah, Denise, Anne, Jeannie, Joy, Carol, Dick, Don, Carol, Nancy, Nancy, Dave, and Kay. And we pray for the repose of the souls of Alpha Brown, mother of Melinda Long and grandmother of Kathy Church, and for Raymond Zahara, Zara, cousin of Rich and Bobby Nichols. Let us now join in the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you, you have, have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>